Well, next up, we have R- Richie Hecker. He's the chairman of the Crypto Working Group. And joining us is a friend of a show also. His name is Valentine Schmidt, and he's the business editor at Epic Times. Welcome, Richie. Well, well, welcome, Valentine. Now, you know, we've all seen the headlines. Crypto market has declined by about 20% over the last two weeks. What was your first reaction? Uh, well, for me, this is really nothing, uh, nothing curious because it's down uh, 50, 60 percent from the frenzy bubble highs in uh, December. And like I just explained to Richie, uh, there's a few things I'm waiting to happen, uh, to see happen before it uh, starts the next uh, leg up. So how much mm-hmm. further down does it go? I don't know, but we're definitely in a bear market. So Richie, what do you think? Whatever it goes up must come down. The market teared up, went up to almost 20,000 last year, and it just needed a correction. Ultimately, the technology needs to develop to support the market cap of the product. And if you look at crypto overall, the entire market cap of crypto is smaller than many than a single com- a single large com- large cap company. So we're still so, in the baby stages. So which one is willing to uh, offer some breaking news when to give in? <laughs> oh, uh, whenever you have the stomach for it. You know, but here's the thing about crypto. We vacillate between like, it's amazing, it's the solution to everything, to it's useless, it has no intrinsic value. Has anyone ever considered that maybe, you know, it's a mix of both? Crypto's got one really powerful thing. The underlying technology of tokenization makes it easy to move money around, Hmm. move it from A to B. When you can make make it faster and easier and cheaper to move money, your cost of capital goes down. That's transformative for the economy. You'll save an absolute fortune for people in banking services and capital formation. That's Hmm. the underlying value of crypto, more so than the individual uh, utility coins or Bitcoin. It's what the technology will bring once it's ubiquitous over the next couple of years. Hmm. Hmm. Valentin, do you agree? Um, mostly, mostly yes. I mean, there's definitely opportunity there. I always like to compare it to the dot-com bubble. I don't know if you guys were around uh, back in the days. Oh, we yeah. were around. We're yeah. old enough, yeah. And, uh, and, and, that's, <laughs> and that's basically I where... I smiled and cried. <laughs> I was too young times, to have though. stocks, but I saw my parents cry. So, you know. So, so then people actually bought into companies that actually had a product. Like, mm-hmm. I was using Amazon and ordered stuff of websites. And it was working. It's just that those companies didn't make any money. Right. And it wasn't technology and then there was over capacity over investment lots of new supply of stocks coming mm. lots of ipos and we see the same today in crypto it's a new technology tons of supply coming you know it's so easy to create a new coin so obviously if there's new supply the whole market needs to go down and there's obviously differences like bitcoin for example has limited mm. supply and distinguishes itself but by and large and then the only issue i have with this uh, agreeing with richie that the technology has potential so far for most of the big, even like 200 million, 500 million, billion dollar coins, we don't have a product that's working. Mm-hmm. And that's an issue. And that's even worse than dot com, which had a product but wasn't profitable. And right. now, in many cases, we don't have a product. Welcome to the new economy, Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of it's an amazing thing when something that doesn't exist is worth a billion dollars. Right, yeah. Wow. It's pretty cool, isn't that's it? That's scary, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, th- there's, not a, there's not a ton of... Uh, the value isn't proven underneath it, so the, the price is going to fluctuate until there's a clear, demonstrable value for what hmm. it is. Hmm. So what's the ratio uh, generally between institutional investors and the users versus, let's People say, like us. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't put a number on it yet, but you were, we're in a great transition, I'd call it. Last year, a lot of the crypto originals sold out. A lot of the money that came out of the market, the price dropped when it went up. And then a lot of the institutional capital has not come in yet because the infrastructure, market infrastructure, is not there yet. Gotcha. So we, we're, in the, we're in that inflection point. Over the next 12 months, we'll see the infrastructure come. Right, right. Then institutional capital will come in. And then the, I think the market will go up. But what coins will go up is very different than the market overall. True. I think most of what will actually you'll see two years from now doesn't exist yet. So I agree 100 percent. Like I talked to some institutional investors at the beginning of the year and they still need to solve issues like custody, very important uh, reporting, uh, all this kind of stuff, internal risk management processes. So some people have made some headway like Paul Novogratz. from government coming in. Yeah, no, I mean, it's (laughs) yeah, it's important. Some people like Novogratz from Galaxy, they've made some headway, but they've also, you know, recently uh, lost money, so um, so that's still off. The ETFs haven't come yet. Uh, the futures uh, trade on very low volume, so um, it's coming. But the question is exactly when. I guess my big concern with crypto isn't exactly the underlying asset because I'm pretty. Uh 
with, you know, it, it brings a lot of value, et cetera. I guess my concern is, you know, kind of holding it. We saw the case recently where a guy had his AT&T phone hacked twice mm-hmm. and he lost $25 million. So the cellular, cellular phone companies uh, have some serious issues in that your phone number can actually be ported out. Oh, it happened to a friend of mine. Yeah, you can pirate the line. Yeah. yeah. So certain cell providers are insecure. Uh, and certain email accounts are insecure. The actual state of security overall on an individual basis is terrible and it needs massive disruption. On the corporate enterprise hmm. side, there's pretty good so- security solutions, but on the individual consumer side or small business side, there really isn't any. I don't, uh, I don't know about that. I think the solution is not there in the heads of the people, but you know, I've seen uh, for, for Bitcoin, you know, you can print out, uh, you can print out a paper wallet offline and have it laminated, distributed among three people, and you need all three pieces to access the wallet. I think that's pretty secure. But do hmm. I have the that brains very old or do I have a, do, do, I, do I want to really uh, learn about it and, and then do it? I think if I had $25 million in Bitcoin, I would totally think that's appropriate. And if you don't do it, well, you know, sort of on you. So I'll separate security into two buckets. One is, can you relatively have, have crypto that's relatively secure? Yes, you can create multiple copies of it distributed. I have, I have a friend that prints it out into like steel plates and puts it in bank vaults and only gives access to it to a few people and you have a few different people to sign up and actually have the equivalent of a multi-sig to sign off on and then be able to get, uh, get, his access, get access to it. It's ridiculously complicated. It's like a James Bond film. Uh, general security, though, is a big problem in the economy. Uh, there's prob- my guess is some over a third of all people in the U.S. have had their personal data hacked in one of the Experian type of breaches. And that means information like social security number, cell phone number, it's all out there. Mm. So your data is much less secure than you think. So it's not just the crypto world. No, right? The whole not. world is insecure. No. It it just, is. just Crypto is where people assume there's money. So when you're a thief or a hacker going after, people go after crypto-related stuff because then once you get access to the Bitcoin, you can, send it off, you can essentially send it out of the system really fast. Versus if you're using the banking system, there's all sorts of checks and balances to actually stop a bad transaction. Mm. That's the beauty of crypto and also its curse, is that right. it's fast and easy. Less forensics, I guess. Yeah, I and mean, you can track it down, but you can't get it back. In the banking gotcha. system, there's there there are <coughs> mechanisms in right. place. And there's a help music. desk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, any, anyway, boys, we're out of time. But thank you so much for joining us for this lively conversation, Richie and Valentin. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs>